Mr. Speaker, I move to suspend the rules and pass H.R. 1281 as amended. The clerk will report the title of the bill. Union calendar number 354, H.R. 1281, a bill to amend the Public Health Service Act to reauthorize programs under Part A of Title 11 of such act. Pursuant to the rule, the gentleman from Pennsylvania, Mr. Pitts, and the gentleman from Texas, Mr. Green, will each control 20 minutes. The chair now recognizes the gentleman from Pennsylvania. Mr. Speaker, I ask unanimous consent that all members may have five legislative days in which to revise and extend their remarks and insert extraneous materials into the record on the bill. Without objection. Mr. Speaker, I yield myself such time as I may consume. The gentleman is recognized. Mr. Speaker, I rise today in support of H.R. 1281, the Newborn Screening Saves Lives Reauthorization Act of 2014, introduced by Representative Lucille Royal Ball Allard of California and Representative Mike Simpson of Indiana, and now includes 120 co-sponsors. This bill amends the Public Health Service Act to extend and revise a grant program for screening and counseling and other services related to genetic disorders. H.R. 1281 reauthorizes federal programs that provide assistance to states to improve and expand their newborn screening programs, support parent and provider education, and ensure laboratory quality and surveillance. Newborn screening is an important public health program for testing every newborn for certain conditions not apparent at birth. This early screening and diagnosis can be life-changing for these children and their families. I urge my colleagues to support this important legislation and reserve the balance of my time. Gentlemen reserves, gentlemen from Texas. Mr. Speaker, I yield myself as much time as I may consume. The gentleman's recognized. Mr. Speaker, I rise in support of H.R. 1281, the Newborn Screening Saves Lives Authorization, Reauthorization Act of 2014. Newborn screening is conducted for a number of genetic, metabolic, hormonal, and functional conditions that may not be apparent at birth. Approximately one in every 300 newborns have a condition that can be detected through screening. If diagnosed early, many of these disorders can be managed successfully. H.R. 1281 reauthorizes the Department of Health and Human Services Advisory Committee that recommends conditions to be included in the uniform screening panel, allows the Advisory Committee to begin consideration of certain new conditions more quickly, and requires the Secretary of HHS to make determinations on the committee's recommendation in a shorter period of time. The bill also extends support for state programs involving screening, counseling, education, and other services demonstration programs to evaluate the effectiveness of services and the clearinghouse of resources related to newborn screening. This legislation puts a new emphasis on the timeliness of newborn screening and all these activities and requires the GAO to report to Congress on this issue. I want to thank the sponsors of the legislation, Congressman Roy Bott Allen, Congressman Simpson, and the sponsor of the Senate Companion Bill, Senator Hagan, Senator Hatch. Leaders on the Energy and Commerce Committee, on the Health and Education and Labor Pensions Committee on their work on this bill, and I support H.R. 1281. I urge my colleagues to support the legislation as well, and I reserve the balance of my time. Gentleman from Texas Reserves, gentleman from Pennsylvania. Mr. Speaker, I yield one minute to the distinguished gentleman from New York, Mr. Collins. Gentleman from New York is recognized for one minute. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I thank my colleague, Representative Roy Ball Allard, for her leadership on this important issue. I come to the House floor tonight to speak in support of H.R. 1281, the Newborn Screening Saves Lives Reauthorization Act, which I am proud to co-sponsor. For the last 50 years, newborn screening services have played an important role for families across the country. Screening for developmental disabilities or diseases at birth can identify treatable diseases early and give a child the opportunity to live a healthy life. I also want to take a moment to thank a leading advocate for newborn screening, Buffalo Bills Hall of Fame quarterback Jim Kelly, who is from New York's 27th District. In 1997, Jim and his wife Jill founded Hunter's Hope Foundation shortly after their son Hunter was diagnosed with Crab A disease. Crab A disease is fatal when left untreated and tragically cut Hunter's life short. With universal newborn screening, the story of Hunter Kelly and countless others with developmental diseases could have been different. I urge the House to reauthorize this vital program today, and I yield back. 
Gentleman yields back. Gentleman from Pennsylvania Reserves. Gentleman from Texas. Mr. Speaker, I'm proud to yield uh, as much time as you may consume my colleague. And, and uh, we came in at the same time in 1993, Congressman Roy Bald Allard. General ladies recognized. I thank the gentleman for yielding. Mr. Speaker, I rise in support of the Newborn Screening Saves Lives Reauthorization Act. I introduced this bill to help ensure our babies continue receiving life-saving newborn screenings. I extend my sincere thanks to my lead co-sponsor, Congressman Michael Simpson, for his support and his long history of championing newborn screening services. I thank Senators Kay Hagan and Orrin Hatch for introducing the Senate Companion Bill, which passed by unanimous consent in January of this year. I also thank the Coalition of Public Health Groups, especially the March of Dimes and the Association of Public Health Laboratories, for working with my office over the last 10 years on this critical issue. Lastly, I would be remiss if I did not mention Debbie Jessup of my staff for her outstanding management of my bill and the work of two exceptional public health fellows, Ariana Baseman and Daphne Delgado, who provided strong leadership in moving the bill forward. Newborn screening is a public health intervention that involves giving babies a simple blood test to identify many life-threatening genetic and metabolic illnesses before symptoms begin. Newborn screening is one of the great public health success stories of the 20th century. Prior to the enactment of the original Newborn Screening Saves Lives Act in 2008, only 10 states and the District of Columbia required infants to be screened for a complete panel of recommended disorders, and there was no federal repository of information on the diseases. Today, 44 states and the District of Columbia require screening of at least 29 of the 31 core treatable conditions. And today, professionals and parents have centralized access to newborn screening information when their baby is diagnosed with one of these disorders. Since the passage of the original bill, newborn screenings have improved and new screenings have been added. These screenings are critical for the approximately 12,000 babies who each year test positive for one of these treatable diseases. Fifty years ago, before newborn screening tests were developed, the conditions of these babies would have gone undetected until symptoms appeared. As a result, they would have unnecessarily died or suffered from their lifelong disabling disorder. Today, because of newborn screening, they have an opportunity and they have hope for a relatively normal life. The ability to rapidly identify and treat these disorders is making a difference between health and disability and even life or death for the children affected by these severe diseases. Unfortunately, critical gaps and challenges still remain. Due to existing discrepancies in the number of tests given from state to state, each year approximately 1,000 infants tragically die or are permanently disabled from otherwise treatable disorders. The passage of the Newborn Screening Saves Lives Reauthorization Act will help avoid these preventable tragedies by providing states with the resources they need to improve their newborn screening programs and to uniformly test for all recommended disorders. It also provides states with assistance in developing follow-up and tracking programs. These provisions will help our financially burdened health care system by saving billions of dollars over the life of these children. In addition, this bill renews the Secretary's Advisory Committee for Heritable Disorders and requires the CDC to ensure the quality of laboratories involved in newborn screening. The bill also continues the Hunter Kelly Newborn Screening Program, which helps NIH researchers develop better detection, prevention, and treatment strategies. Mr. Speaker, 
the Newborn Screening Saves Lives Reauthorization Act will continue to help parents and health providers to be knowledgeable about the importance of newborn screening tests, and it will help ensure all our newborn babies receive the comprehensive, consistent testing they need to have healthy, happy, and productive lives. Where a baby is born should not determine its chance to have a healthy future. I urge my colleagues to vote yes on the passage of H.R. 1281. I yield back the balance of my time. Gentlelady yields back. Gentleman from Texas Reserves. Gentleman from Pennsylvania. Mr. Speaker, I yield three minutes to the gentlelady from Minnesota, Ms. Bachman. Gentlelady from Minnesota is recognized for three minutes. I thank my colleague, uh, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Pitts from Pennsylvania, one of the greatest champions that this chamber has ever seen in the cause of human life, and I share that cause with him as well. And I thank the authors for their positive intentions on this bill. I'm a mother of five biological children and 23 foster children, and that's what every parent and every mother and every father hopes, is to have the best possible health care for their children, the best possible outcomes. But I do share concerns on this bill as well, as well-intentioned as this is. And let me just list what my concerns are. Number one, the federal government will have the ability to collect and automatically store the blood sample of every baby in the United States. There won't be any allowment for parental consent to be required before the storage of these blood samples are made. Every baby's DNA which is the entire genetic code of that baby, will be under the control of the government. I have data privacy concerns. Why should anyone, especially our government, have everyone's identity at their disposal? Third, there is no provision for any parent to opt out. So this legislation presumes that every parent of every newborn in the United States of America pre-agrees that the government can have their baby's blood sample, that, which contains their DNA code, and that the government can indefinitely store that data. What limitations will there be on their government, on our government, and what they can do with this information and how they will handle this data? And now, Mr. Speaker, knowing that our government has the potential to control every American's health care, under Obamacare, how could government's control of a baby's DNA information impact the full access to health care or education opportunities or job opportunities for a child who is predetermined by their DNA to potentially have a problem later in life? These are just a few of the questions, Mr. Speaker, that I believe need to be addressed. I know this bill has passed the Senate. I know it will be voice voted. I would like to ask for a roll call vote, but I understand that the process is already deep on its way. I do hope that these questions will be addressed in future legislation. It may not be done in this legislation. I hope it will be in the future because we should not be, Americans should not see the death of privacy, especially of the most sensitive private information that every American can have, their DNA their genetic code, what God gave to them, that should be something that's between the individual, their doctor, and God, and it shouldn't be for the government to control that data. I want to thank Mr. Pitts. I in no way cast any negative aspersion upon himself or any of the authors on this bill. These are just some of the questions that I have, and I yield back to Mr. Pitts. Gentlelady's time has expired. Gentleman from Pennsylvania Reserves. Gentleman from Texas. We reserve, Mr. Speaker. Gentleman from Texas reserves. Gentleman from Texas is recognized. Urge, uh, urge support for the legislation and yield back my time. Gentleman from Texas yields back. Gentleman from Pennsylvania. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I urge support again for this important and bipartisan legislation and yield back the balance of my time. Gentleman from Pennsylvania yields back. The question is, will the House suspend the rules and pass the bill, H.R. 1281, as amended? Those in favor say aye. Those opposed, no. In the opinion of the chair, two-thirds being in the affirmative, the rules are suspended, the bill is passed, and without objection, the motion to reconsider is laid on the table.